I don't know if you guys remember a few years ago when I was first starting to grow my business, how I was telling everybody I needed a bigger house. Yeah, I'm like way beyond that now. I can barely walk through my garage anymore. What's going on guys? Andy here. Cut and clean lawn care in the basement. It's early. It's Monday morning. It's supposed to be a rainy, cold day today, like 35 degrees and rainy all day. So no mowing going on today, but it gives me a good opportunity to go ahead and start on my small parts list for Operation Skag V-Ride backup. Let's go check that thing out. The list is small, so I'll go run up to Coleman Power Equipment. They're the Skag dealer out here right now. And I'm just going to see if I can get some of these miscellaneous parts I need. Maybe cosmetically, just the things I know that are going to be more accessible that they'll have so I can start working on this project. So let's go check it out. Well, here it is, guys, if you haven't seen the live video or some of the pictures I did on Instagram. This is the Skag 52 I bought. Like I said, I think it has 2,700 hours on the machine itself and around 400 on the motor. The engine is a Vanguard 28 horsepower EFI, so it is fuel injected, which is pretty cool. But as far as the parts and stuff I gotta get, I gotta get the little mushroom top air filter. I gotta get the little lips air filter, whatever you wanna call it, the little breather thing. I gotta get those for that. So that'll be all done and ready to go. Like I said, just small cosmetic things, but also you don't want water getting into a lot of that stuff. I may check on this spring that I fixed. As far as the spindles, I know when I was changing the blades the other day, which would have been yesterday, I noticed a couple of them were bent. One's way more bent than the others as far as the bolt that goes up through the blades and holds on to the nut. And this is the one that's really bent because as you can see on this one, the bolt doesn't even come up past the nut. On all the other ones, you have a little bit of bolt sticking up. This one, this bolt through here is bent. So I'm going to buy new bolts and probably new spacers too just to see if that helps the problem at all. That way, 100%, I will know whether the spindles are bent or whatever from there. But it's all stuff that needs to be done anyways. I do have this cover for this spindle. I need to get the one for the left one under this. I'm not going to take it off. If you haven't seen the video on this tensioner pulley arm, you can see it's kind of in there behind that. I don't even know you can see it. You can kind of see it in there. But the bearings are worn out in it, so I got to get new bearings for that. I don't even remember what else I needed, but I got a list. All right, here's my little list. Like I said, it's not a bunch of stuff. The little air filter lip I already talked about. The little rain cap mushroom looking thing. Boom, got it on there. The tensioner arm bearings. I need two of them. Got it on there. Discharge chute spindle cover. Got it on the list. The caster debris crap. That's right. On one of the front casters that is serviceable as far as uh, greasing, being greasable. The cap's missing for that, so I need to get that on there. Uh, I need to get front tires for it eventually. I'm not going to worry about that now. Spindles as a question mark because I want to see if those spindles are out of whack or not. Uh, the deck adjustment levering spring, I was talking about that as well. Blade bolts and spacers. Like I said, right now it's not a huge list. A lot of small parts that will add up. But this is just kind of my start. I'm going to see what all I can get of this today. And the more I get into the mower, I'm sure there's going to be more things I found out I need. What do you think? Is there anything else I need? Linus. Yeah guys, that's about it. Just kind of waiting for the bus. I may or may not take this up to Coleman with me. Either way, I'll be coming back, showing you the parts I'm talking about. Check out the Halloween blow-ups. Dude, my kid loves Halloween. But that's about it, man. Just ready to get him on the bus and I'm going to head to Coleman, go get these parts, and kind of show you the parts and run through the mower on some of the stuff that I'm talking about. So I'll be right back with you guys. And as easy as that, man, we are back from Coleman. Picked up a bunch of the stuff I needed. Let's check it out and see what I got real quick. Now, I didn't go ahead and get everything I needed in one trip because you're always going to need more stuff. So like the dust and debris covers for the spindles. I didn't worry about that. It's kind of more cosmetic stuff. I wanted to get the main things I needed as far as operation of this mower. So the big ticket item, obviously, wheels and tires for the mowers. They're about $90-something dollars piece, so that's 200 bucks right there. Everything all together, I only spent a little over $300, which to me, getting a mower back in its good shape, you can't beat that. That's, that's a decent price. So I got all the stuff I needed for the air filter. This little breather thing goes here. And this is that little dust and rain 
mushroom cap that goes there. You know what I'm saying? All that good stuff. So I got all new blade bolts because I noticed when I changed the blades out when I first got this, two of these were bent in here, which I'm pretty sure is what's going to be causing my issue. Because like I said, if you can see right there on the top of that spindle, the bolt is actually underneath the top of that nut. But if you go over here to the other one, which you can see there, the bolt sticks up past the nut. And this is the one that is about a half inch lower than all the other ones. And that bolt is completely bent. So that's a part of that problem. And I also got all new spacers to go with those because a lot of the spacers that were under there were kind of mushroomed out and deformed from impact. Got a new one of those for the front here. This needs to be tick, 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 ticked on with a hammer. New spring for the handle there that I used my uh, 9 millimeter shield magazine just to get it to work for a little bit. I'll be putting that on there. And last but, last, last but not least, I got the bearings for the tensioner pulley arm. But in this video, I'm just going to knock out probably, I'm just going to get the spring done, throw this stuff on the air filter, and probably just call that a video for today. I may even just hammer that thing on because it's easy. But the rest of this stuff, I'm going to do in different parts of the videos because right now I don't want to pull everything out to do it. It's cold and it's getting ready to start raining. So I'm going to knock these couple things out really quick. So we're going to start right here with the spring that goes on this arm, which is what lets you get your mower into like travel or hauling on your trailer. When you pull it up, it'll raise up and click and you need that spring in there to get this. The spring I used is actually made to decompress, wait, is made to compress and not decompress. So it was just a quick fix to get me mowing and uh, just testing the mower out. Really pointless, not gonna work. So we're gonna take this off and put the correct one on there real quick. All right, I'm back. Needle nose pliers. I'm a fisherman like you guys know, so I have needle nose pliers in pretty much every room of my house. So they're always in close proximity. Done, look at it magazine spring quick fix man so if you guys carry and you always have a gun on you just disassemble your entire gun magazine use a spring you know boom that's all it takes quick fix next one's really easy it's just the cap that goes on this front caster hit it with a rubber hammer and it's on there Alright guys, so the spring is on the deck lift, the little dust caps on the front cast arm, so now I'm just going to put the stuff that needs to be on this air filter on, and probably call that a video for today. And like I was saying guys, it's cold and rainy, and I was working on this thing all day yesterday, getting it so it tracked correctly. Maybe I'll do a quick segment in this video just showing you what I did with that. So basically all I did was do some things to readjust the deck the way it needs to be and make it to where it tracks straight and stops when it's in neutral. So I'll show you that stuff too. But we're gonna go ahead and put these air filtration things on there that to me are one of the most important things. Like you said, this engine has about 400 hours on it, but I don't know for how long it's not had these on there. So when I popped them off and checked the filters, the filters were pretty dirty and had a lot of stuff, but didn't look like debris was getting into the engine because it is the two stage like Kawasaki, you know, filtration system. But the number one cause, in my opinion, for a lot of these engines dying fast is bad filtration. A lot of that stuff gets in your engine. So let's get this stuff back on here and be ready to go. I need to go grab a hose clamp real quick for this to make sure it doesn't come back off. Actually, I'm gonna need to run to the hardware store real quick because I gotta get a hose clamp and some super glue for some other stuff. So I'm gonna do that. I'll be right back, finish this, talk about the other things I did in the mower. I'll be right back. All right, back from the hardware store with the goods. So now we can put this thing on here. Tell you what, that was a difficult one right there. All right guys, so progress for today. I just got a phone call, I gotta take my son's iPad up to school because he forgot it again. But the spring is installed, works and functions great. The little cap on the top is on there. The new cap over there, a lot of you guys are gonna say I should have probably cleaned this all out. I really don't care, man. I just loaded it up full of grease. It's gonna continue working. There's no reason for it not to. It's all gonna get cleaned up and probably repainted at one point too. Put filter caps on there. So this little breather lip that doesn't fit, 
I just took some regular particle foam and I just strapped it on there. It's going to keep big pieces of debris from going into the engine and just help it last a little bit longer. So that's kind of where we're at. That's going to be it for this first kind of installment video on this mower. Just kind of showing it to you guys and what I need to get done. I may or may not move my trailer out and start working on the blades and spacers for the next video. But like I said, I got to run to my son's school and take some stuff up there and get some other stuff cleaned up. But I got the bolts and spacers, so I may do that. So be ready for that video coming up next. And also in that video, I'll show you how I did the tracking and what other, other stuff was on there. I said I was going to do it in this video, but I got to move all that to do it, and I don't have the time right now. So I got to go head up to my son's school and take it up there. I appreciate you guys for checking it out. Leave some comments down below, man. If you guys have one of these old first-gen Skags, let me know some of the problems you may have had to it or came across that I may want to think about going ahead and doing while I'm working on this machine. But yeah, guys, until the next video, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. You can't